What's this? For three seventy, R seven three seventy. Like a boss. I'll have to try that out. Some point. The, are those supposed to mine? They can mine. That does twenty two mega hash. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Pulled out of that box. <laughs> nice. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Check. Let's do a mic check one more time. Is there no way for us to tell our own audio levels? Uh, yeah. I mean, we were listening to our audio levels before. Good sound. Good sound. So I removed. I just. It's something with Elgato. Like, I have to remove it completely. Like, I pulled the whole source and just let it reinstall itself. It's so weird. Yeah. So you guys are good? You guys can hear me now? Good. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, it's just like every time. Every time we every time I have a stream or if I move or I do something, and if I plug it in to the USB, like if I unplugged it, it like breaks the driver or something. <laughs> it's so stupid. Don't st Sorry, never guys. stream on location. Never stream on location, exactly. So, to, welcome back. Uh, we're going to have to... Uh, I don't want to restart the stream, so I'm going to have to cut all that first part for people. We'll have to do an edit on that and remove it. So, welcome, 150 people. If you guys get a chance and anybody can take a shout out, and we didn't tweet <laughs> it out or anything that we're live right now. If you guys want to throw that, otherwise people can catch the restream. I do want an opportunity for people to ask questions in tonight's stream. I have BBT Brett here tonight. This is his setup. We are building. Um, we started it last night. We didn't get risers until this after, late this afternoon, like almost 6 o'clock tonight we got risers. So we were able to finally get one of the uh, rigs going. We got it mining right now. It's bouncing between. We have one card I think is causing an issue. But by and large, it's staying. It's running. It's about a 390 mega hash uh, for 13 cards. So it's doing very well. It's about 30.5 mega hash on these RX 580s that we have tonight. And it's these ones right here, which are the Sapphire Pulse. These are the overclocks, 4 gigs. That's what we're using. These came from Amazon. They're still on Amazon. Uh, 60 of these is what we're going to be putting into this rack here essentially 13 cards and then there's a midpoint and i will bring the camera over it if for everybody can see it i'm going to i'm going to move it around i'm going to bring it to where you guys can get close and see everything that we have and how we're having it configured but essentially about midway in the rack there's a little uh connector there that sh shows you kind of the midpoint that's exactly enough space with almost an inch and a half space in between each cards to do 13 which is exactly what you need on a B250 Mining Expert motherboard. So you can use right now 13 on this. We did update it to the latest BIOS. And if we get a chance tonight, I'm going to put the 13 here. And what I'll do is I'll sneak a few of the, uh, the other cards over, the risers over. And we'll see with the new BIOS that just came out here in December if we can bust 13 on this without having to have the P106s. I don't know if they can yet. That's one thing I wanted to test. We'll test that tonight to see if the new BIOS does that. How long was that rack? This rack, I believe, is, is 71. 72 inches. Do we have that, the actual tape? Or is that up in the, it's upstairs, like the grudge? Right yeah, we can, we, we'll get the tape for you. 71, right? I th we, from the actual racks themselves, are 71 inches. I think the rack itself is 73 or 74 inches to this edge. We'll measure it here in a bit. But a so, uh, $150 rack from Home Depot. Yeah, we got this rack from Home Depot uh, in the U.S. If you're in the U.S., it's at Home Depot. And it is, we'll put the link in the description. We didn't put the links. We only had the Amazon stuff in there. But we will put the link to this exact rack. That way you can see it. You can set these in different levels. We have them a little lower right now. We're looking to see if we can get some extra, just some extra shells for this. Uh, but right now they're in 12-inch configuration. So essentially about five, about six inches off the ground and then 12 inches, you know, between point to point here. And we're going to do 13 and then another 13 here. And then we're going to do 13 on the bottom and another 13 across the bottom. And then we're going to have 13 on just this midpoint here. So they'll be kind of close and wrapped and stacked, but it does give you some good spacing. Enough for the motherboard under here. Again, I will bring the camera over in a little bit here. That way you guys can see the kind of spacing and how the wires and everything are. 
We are using the B250 Mining Expert Board. You guys have seen this a few times. I'll try to stand in the light for you guys can see it. And we are using all three power supplies uh, connectors on this. This allows us to use the daisy chain bridging. We're using 850P2s. We're using three of them to power the 13 cards. And I'll show you guys how we got those powered right now. It's a good even spread across all those power supplies. Roughly, um, we're estimating, we don't have a meter on it yet, but we're estimating around 600 watts, if you're 6, 650 across each one of them if we're dual mining. And that was kind of the goal with these, uh, these RX 580s is the ability to dual mine so we would have enough overhead. What we would have to do is possibly um, do some expansion, uh, and I'll show you guys some of those with the the dual eight pens or the six, two, and eight pens if we wanted to ever take this to 19 cards with the P106s. Um, we've got to do some, we got to look at what, what it will, what it will take if we're pushing the PSUs a little too much to add those or not. We got to do the math on it, make sure what the real output of these are to see if we could expand it eventually to add an eight of the P106s. If the if the BIOS doesn't allow more of these on there, you actually need the P106s to get the full 19. Because right now the max on this board is 13 GP regular retail GPUs is the max you can put on this board. So um, a couple people are asking what a P106 is. P106 is a specific mining card pr produced by uh, it's an actual an Nvidia card. So, you know, you have AMD and you have NVIDIA. Those are your two kind of, you know, core company brands. They have different architecture. The P106 is essentially a GTX 1060. And it's specifically for mining. It does not have any PCBs on it or any uh, input-output devices. It's essentially just this, this can, you know, the end connector with nothing there. It's just a daughter card is what they consider those to where it is specifically for mining and it's essentially the, the P106 uh, series which is the GTX 1060 chipset. So you buy those and then th this board, this is what allows this board to go to a 8 P106s and 8 p one. that's just doing the uh, no, it's doing the uh, the dev fee. So play more re kicks it. Um, the P one oh six is you need to have eight of those and then you can have eleven regular cards in that configuration. That will allow you to get nineteen on this board. So right now we're running thirteen, which is the max, with just regular GPUs, and that's our kind our current configuration right now. Yeah, he's going to coin mine for that one. So Right now, we're going to go ahead and put up, tonight is what I'm going to take you guys through, is I'm starting to put this together. Uh, I'll show you guys kind of the way we got this kind of hooked up. So, this rack was pretty much right out of the box. Don't mind that rack that's up there. That's actually just like a, like a in the closet kind of rack that we kind of threw up there just to hold some boxes for right now. That's kind of temporary up there, but um, we did add some angled aluminum. This is a six inch run, essentially, of angled aluminum. This is the 1 16th, one inch by one inch angled aluminum you've seen in a lot of our builds. We added about uh, a few inches in from this. I think it's about nine to 10 inches in from the, uh, the front of the, the piece here. We brought that down six inches angled aluminum and then we're running a 71 inch angled aluminum piece across the bottom which you'll see here in a second, allows the GPUs to set in there like this. I'll show you guys kind of the way that's set up. It allows it to set on the back where the GPUs will set in it. Where you got that piece that's hanging down right there. You got it kind of set up like that. Or if the GPUs running forward, it kind of sets in there and kind of cradles it from the back. So then it can set in there just like that. So that's why we got it with the 71 inch piece on the back. And then on the front of these, which you don't see, and I will bring the camera over, is the GPUs. There's actually a lip on the inside of this, these different pieces here. There's a lip that the GPU can rest on which is pretty nice about these cases. 
And so here we have this situation where we have put the GPU in this way, kind of spin it around, and then it can just set there, just like that. So you can see that one just kind of setting up in there. And the back plate kind of holds it there. And then what we're doing is we're running in, where's the two-sided, here we go. On the inside lip here, we're running this 3M double-sided tape. So we, we pretty much glaze that top part of that, put that part down, you pull the top part off once it's in there, and then the GPUs catch that and it just has a nice high, high torque on that to where the GPUs don't want to spin out of there or do anything. They just set in there really nice and tight. So the two-sided tape allows you to you know, kind of place and sit the GPU in there and then it's nice and solid in there you know and if you want to pull it out you really got to kind of lift up because it is connected to that that two-sided tape the reason why we went with this solution versus trying to zip tie which you see a lot of people zip tie here is just in case if I need to move some GPUs around or if we have a problem child I don't have to sit there and clip the uh, you know the zip ties and when you start doing the math on 60 60 GPUs oh we crashed nice it was doing a, a Windows update too so We'll see if that thread stuck in driver. We'll let that reboot. Fresh copy of Windows, so it's doing the doing the updates. It just got done with the Fall Creator update, so I'm assuming that once it's done with its update, we can get it to work right. Again, we haven't done a lot of optimization yet. We've just been building. I make sure things are running, and then we'll go back in and optimize, make sure things are not crashing and rebooting and all that. That ends up being most of the fun with this kind of stuff. But right now we're just in the mechanical put it together mode. So again, this is the kind of setup that we're working here tonight. When you're when you're building 60 GPUs is a little different scale, and it's just getting things or organized and structured to make sure that you're in good shape. So right now the first part's just to get everything in there, get everything connected. Then we can start going through and look at software, look at clock settings, and all that kind of stuff. So right now we're running at a pretty aggressive overclock on these. You want, that, to, you want to show the, the picture on the motherboard picture? I'm gonna do that. The which one? Yeah, yeah, they'll see that in a minute. They'll see it when I do this one here. Oh, um, so right now th those those have a standard of 1750 memory clock, and we're running them at 2060, so it's a lot higher than normal. Uh, just to see if we can maintain the 30 because uh, right now it's at 30.5 mega hash. Um, there's a good chance we're probably going to end up having to kind of take that down a notch as it starts to reboot Windows here, coming into Windows now. Um, and, and there it is. It's doing a, getting ready for Windows update. So it more than likely that update uh, killed it. So we'll let it finish updating. But what we're going to do now... And I, I'll take some questions. I'm just going to start getting this built as you guys are asking questions. We're going to put the motherboard on some little stands. So we made these little 9-inch stands, essentially, that we're going to zip the motherboard down onto, mainly because this is obviously a metal rack, and we want to set it there. There's different ways you can do that, and I want to make sure that people understand that. There is, like, this is the creative part that you get to do. you got to just look at the mission. The mission is to get the motherboard on there in a place that is more centered to where you can hook up stuff. How you put it on there, if you want to put it on a piece of foam, you want to put it on a box, it doesn't matter. That's up to you and it's totally on what what kind of timing you have and how you want to do it. We are just putting these under here, as you can see, little wood blocks, and we have little nylon spacers that they're going to set on. And with the three on there, it's just going to have like three little feet on the bottom of this motherboard. And we're doing that, that way we know that it's just that if we're having to move it or doing anything, I know that it's not going to touch anything that's going to fry anything or anything like that. So that's the way we do it. It doesn't matter. You can do it the way you want to do it. That makes sense. The whole point is that you just need the motherboard down there and in a space that you can get it connected to. Let's back up. Let's do... Your uh, URL is bitsbytrippin.com. Yeah, bitsbytrippin.com or bitsbytrippin.io takes you to the website. Let's let that run. Let's see if we can get it to crash again and reboot. We may have to adjust the settings. 
People are probably wondering like how the heck are you trying to overclock this? I will get into that and show you guys how we're doing that. We're doing it directly in line inside the bat file that we're running right now. So we're pushing the settings for the overclocks and all that straight to it. The BIOS that we created for this one, we have custom straps for. We will upload that. I will get that uploaded tonight for the BIOS for this. It is timings only. So I did not do any forced clocks on this at all. It's just the timing straps to make this thing work and uh, with what you're seeing there and what you saw on Twitter at 30.5 mega hash if you run the higher clocks. If you drop these down to about 2000 or 1950, you'll be about 27 and a half, 28 mega hash. So on these um, sapphires. So let's get this going. Let's put these back. And we got these other six inch runs for the other shelves that we'll be doing later. putting those together I'll start to put this together so we can get this thing built and they can see this thing get built on the live stream so essentially I just put these <laughs> over we got somebody said you pass around harbor like a joint at a grateful dead concert <laughs> like a joint at a grateful dead concert <laughs> that's good hmm. Yeah, so i just putting these little, we'll put these on there. They're just little nylon spacers. We've had them on several of our builds. You can get these at Lowe's, Home Depot. You know, I recommend ordering them actually on Amazon because you can order them in a box of 100 for cheap. You'll spend three times more buying them in packs of three or packs of two, depending on how, what's going on there. Now this part usually scares the crap out of people because I use power tools on a motherboard and I use drywall sheet screws, which also scare people. And there are, again, different ways to do things. Where is my screw pack though? We got our stuff all over this place. the one thing I didn't bring over there. There it is. Just using drywall screws here. Putting these down. Now, normally you can pre-drill these. This will split the wood if you don't pre-drill it. Which is what you're hearing right now. <laughs> Stuff flying everywhere. That was actually the other, the other uh, nylon spacer that I just sent flying down over here. But, Again, you work with, we're not in our normal workshop, we're just working with what we have. The big thing is just knowing what you need. And then having somewhere like a hardware shop or something you can go to. Because anytime you do this, you're always going to need stuff that you're just like, oh, crap, I'm going to need more of this. <laughs> I'm driving them nuts. No, somebody said, let's have a live stream tomorrow and mud all those sheetrock screws. <laughs> no, <laughs> sheetrock <laughs> screws. <laughs> there's different, there's different things you can use. I mean, it's... I think you talk about the wall. Oh, the <laughs> oh over here. <laughs> the corners. Somebody's a carpenter and it's really bothering them. It's really bothering them, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's different, thing, different ways to do this. I mean, some people just put them in... I mean, I, I put them... I put the motherboards just on the boxes and just kind of zip them down. It's not that big of a deal. I'm trying to look for something a little bit more semi-permanent here. But the main thing is I just I don't want the motherboard at all getting close to the metal below. I want it to be able to rest with a little bit of height.
and just be lifted up a little bit above it. But this is no different than our normal builds when we do it on the the cases that we build. We'll put this together and then we're going to lay this down here. That's really just to get that get it settled down here and then we'll un we'll open up the 850p2s. Put those in there. Part of it when you're doing it at scale like this, it's making sure you can, especially if you're doing AMD, that you can deploy BIOSes efficiently and you guys will get to see that because we're going to be using fresh GPUs here with no BIOS on them. And I'll show you guys how we do that. Again, this is kind of a live stream action. We were just kind of doing it as as we go. We were going to try to do one last night. Did not have... We had some flaky internet stuff. Hold it there. I got one more. One more to get, and then we're done with that. This and uh, here it is. Splitting the wood a little bit. It's not that super, super big deal. Tonight it's more about just getting the thing set up. We're just sliding the grommet in place. Or the uh, nylon spacer, rather, not the grommet. Yeah, this thing's holding pretty good now. It's just that, that BIOS update, or that uh, the update. All right, everything's all good to go. Got them all there. This one's not all the way down. On this side. We need... What's everybody doing? How many people we up to tonight? 268. 268? <laughs> A question after my own heart. Well, it's at 13 GPUs per board. Why are you using three PSUs? Um, because we were looking at doing dual mining, and with it, so we could use we could use two GP or two two power supplies. The the thirteen GPUs running power save mode and only Ethereum, we could get by with the sixteen hundred watt or the seventeen hundred watts provided by the eight fifty P twos. However, the first PSU that's holding up the motherboard and essentially a handful of those GPUs, six of those GPUs would be putting that that 850 just over its limit. We'd really need to move to a thousand watt P2 if we were doing that. So splitting it across three, since this motherboard holds three power supplies, gives us an advantage to just go ahead and spend the extra $150 for the other power supply and be able to dual mine with those 13 GPUs. Additionally, if we wanted to move to eight, adding eight more of the P106s because they only use 60 watts as long as we're using the power save mode on the 11 the the other 11 because we would have to drop two regular 580s if we went with the 8 P106s all of that being said as long as we were using the right adapters which I don't know if I have any right here available immediately the uh, they're over here um, If we were using these these adapters here, which give us a single eight to two eight pins, what we could do is switch these to two six pins, because you can pull these off here, 
and move them to two six pins from a single eight pin, we can take one of the eight pins off the 850s and split it to two GPUs. We would do that a handful of times with the available extra connector, connectors on those 850s and we could get all 19 GPUs across all three of those PSUs. So it's really just for that, that ability to dual mine when we need to or go into single mine with the other eight GPUs. So it was a good question. Mrs. BBT's wa watching live from the house. Miss BBT's watching live from the house. Miss BBT is not here. She's been probably wondering where I've been at because I've been over here for the last two days. Whereas we've been kind of getting this all built and everything kind of inventoried and looking, making sure that we had everything. You know, had the thousand pack of you know uh, zip ties that we're actually not going to use a lot of. You're going to have like a lifetime supply of, of zip ties because we're doing the 3M tape on the actual on the actual GPUs. So we're going to put this down here right here and this is going to be setting about about right here. So that's where that's going to set and then we'll start to get everything else there here soon. What we need now is to take the 850P2s out of here the power, is, if you look in our description, we have the trip light PDUs. It's a power distribution unit. Those are 30 amp connections. There's two 30 amp connections that have been brought over to this wall, and we're going to be using both of them and really kind of pretty much maxing them out with 60 GPUs. Um, and we're going to have to do some numbers to make sure we stay under it with the dual mining, um, just to make sure we're going to be right at that edge of 6,000 watts per PDU and you really only want to do about 5700 max on those so we're going to be right at you know 11,000 watts of power on this so I'm going to three, take three questions sure heat what are we going to do with all that heat so this is an exterior wall right here so what we can do is we're going to take a look at how much output this particular rig set, setup is this isn't a basement that is a walkout. So in the area that we're in, it's pretty cool right now. So outside temperature right now is like that's seven or eight degrees. So it's, I mean, if I open that door, it's gonna get super chilly in here. However, there is opportunity to punch holes through this and go exterior with the exhausting. And then again, also, you know, wall this off right here with this section that you see in and then create kind of a ventilation system here. So this is the first stage, worst case, we. Pop, you know, pop the door or pop a hole in that that wall with an exhaust fan out. We're gonna get this out real quick. Get these. Uh, brand of memory. Brand of memory is Corsair Ballistics. I don't know where we have our memory at. I'll show them. I think we have Sport LP out there, which is actually the cheaper version. Linked. But, is it over here? That's actually going to be a thing we're going to need here soon. <laughs> <laughs> it is around here somewhere. We're kind of throwing these off to the side. So the 850P2, you'll see on the back here, 850P2, we will be using pretty much every connection on this. Besides the, uh, this has two, or it has two CPUs. CPU 1, CPU 2, we'll be using just one of those CPUs for the board. Um, then it has four connections for VGA with a double 6-8 pin connector. So we'll be using all those for all three. Motherboard and then it's got three SATA with four per each. I don't know, maybe over there. And then uh, on, on the on one of the, on the primary power supply, we'll be using the four pin. We are plugging in the four pin Molexes since we're running all three power supplies on this uh, B250. So we do use on the main power supply of the three. The one, when I say the main, I'm just saying one of these 850P2s will be using one of the CPUs and one of the PA, uh, the, the PADA connections, the four pin Molexes for the front of the motherboard, which you'll see here. When I say the, the front of the motherboard, I'm talking these 
three here. Now, normally on a few of our builds, we've not used those since we're using powered risers, but since we're using all three PSUs and potentially moving 219 GPUs at a point, we are connecting all three of those since we have the three power supplies connected. And cost. Yes. Vomit inducing, they, people are asking about cost. Vomit inducing, is that what you just said? Yes. Uh, cost is uh, about 25k. About 25k right now for this whole setup. That's 60 GPUs, motherboards. Uh, it's about 25, 25, 28 thousand. When you look at all of the uh, all the other hardware and the ancillary stuff, like you know, like bags of zip ties and you know, nine dollar, twelve dollar, three M tape and. It's the little things that get you that extra couple hundred dollars that you didn't realize that you were going to use and cost um, to put something like this together. I like your response, vomit inducing. Vomit inducing, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> How much was this? <laughs> 25K. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just getting these all plugged in. I got to do three of these, so I'm going to speed it up because I usually just talk, talk, talk. You guys can ask questions. Oh, it crashed again. It's probably it's probably the aggressive settings we got. Well, it's giving us now a thread stuck in device driver, so that is, and that's probably when it's switching between Claymore. Uh, let's do a, uh, I'm going to do a no fee on this for right now and see if I can get it to crash again because I think it's when it's switching over to his pool it's crashing we'll see if that answers that question ultimately we'll probably have this on simple mining anyways it just we had the the actual uh, Windows drive plugged in because we needed to update all the all the cards as BIOS because these are AMD cards. You could do this kind of setup with NVIDIA, but you're going to spend a lot more money. Um, the base cost on like a 1060 setup like this would be about 30% slower, 20% slower, um, but be a, a more cost because the 1060 these days are about. $329, I think. 24 pin here. Let's get this plugged in. From a time consumption standpoint, planning your build out is where really a lot of the time comes in. Uh, figuring out like this L bracket thing that we have going on, holding the GPUs up and stuff. There was a few iterations that we did of that just to see um, for this particular thing. Once you kind of have, if you're gonna do them at scale and do them a lot, you'll find a build that works for you and you'll continue it. But this, each time you do this, it can be a little different. And a lot of that has to do with because the GPUs are different sizes. Sometimes the power requirements are a little different. So it really is a, just an approach Back in the day, you, they said somebody said you recommended 50 to 60 percent load on PSUs, but it seems lately you've been pushing it. Um, yeah, I mean, so ideally, if you have the overhead and you want to go long on it, um, you you don't want to really push them to like 80 percent. These are going to be running about 600 out of the 850, which is not too bad. Um, if we were dropping them to two PSUs, we'd be right there at 1600 watts almost out of the 1700 available, which is really maxed out. So 600 on 850 isn't bad. I mean, I think that's pretty decent. That's right in the power band of it. Um, well, I'm gonna set this up for some no fee action. In two days, I don't think I've touched that memory and I do not see it. Yeah, is it down here? Oh, it's down here. I'm a dumb. My ass. Hold on. Show. Them. Yeah, here you go. So, I think the one that we got linked right now is a red version of this, but this is a this is the same stuff. 
So it's uh, Corsair's Ballistics. I think it's Corsair. No, this is Micron Ballistics. Corsair, Micron, and Crucial all make about the same. They all make a ballistics version. This is the red version. I think we linked the red. Our, this is the uh, gray version. This is the red version sports are the ones that are linked. Uh, these ones, if you try to get the Micron versions, are a little more expensive. They are both the same speed. It's literally just like a, a, a brand difference. So um, they're, they're the same exact speed. It's in the sports class. So there's sports, tactical, and elite across all these different types. This is the sport, the one that's linked in the description sport. So, and they're both DDR4. And you'll spend a little more money. These are 99, I think the ones that are linked in the description are cheaper. Where is the I'm doing that this actually is going to hit a little bit on the overhead I'm just as more just measuring to make sure that the reboot is not being caused by Claymore switching over to the dev fee and mining on his pool because I think that trigger is throwing the causing the uh, machine to reboot no fee is not the option okay I don't remember what that is actually on a uh, look up on Claymore's you could just Google Claymore version 10. You'll get to the Bitcoin Talk forum post of it. And then there's all the options for Claymore. And the one that we're looking for is the no fee option. 10 .2. I, I thought it was negative. I thought it was minus no fee. Yeah, 10.2. It's uh, this one right here, I think is 10, 10 or 10 one. It's all the same, same syntax, but. Dash no fee. Dash no fee, that's what I got, right? Is it a space? No. No Dash space? N O F E E. F -E no spaces. That's what I got in there, I think. Edit. Sorry, we don't have the screen of you guys because we're not in. So it's dash no feet. Right here, right? No uh, subject, no, no command unknown. I want to put it closer in the. Uh, no fee for you. Oh, is it like a no fee equals one or no fee zero? I'm gonna put one. I don't usually use this command because I give Claymore his stuff, but when I'm troubleshooting, sometimes I have to do that. Because I don't want to make sure that it's not triggering off his... I'm kind of troubleshooting this rig as we go. The docs say you can use dash no fee space one. That's what I just did, no fee dash one. But it says dash no fee should work. On an alias. Yeah. GA is coming up, 13. We are using Windows 10 with the uh, with the fall creator update, if you're just tuning in and you're trying to figure out how the hell are you using 13 GPUs in Windows, you have to have the fall creator update, which is version of Windows 17, 1709, I believe, or higher. 1713, I don't know. I think, I know it's over 1709. I missed the, but Mrs. BBT's here to back me up. Uh -oh. Somebody asked uh, the memory type on the GPUs. Uh, memory type on the GPUs uh, so far, at least on the first 13, were Alpita. Good question. This is 
going to be the first PSU that we're setting up here, which is going to have the four pin Molex. I will bring the camera over, I promise. I'll do it right after I get one of these PSU, though, for the folks that are have been tuning in for a minute. They're like, longest un or, you know, setup of a power supply ever. How long has this been? 20 oh, minutes man. for me to plug it in. Oh, get comfy. Get comfy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be here a while. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while. All right, those are all the Santas. Tell us about the Trip Light PDU. It's the it's literally the Trip Light Basic. PDU. It's the yeah, it's the basic one. This one doesn't even have a monitor on it. It's essentially just the uh, 30 amp connector. We have the one linked. It is literally uh, that was a riser thing. I'm gonna come around the back here to put this power supply in. You definitely want to have space that you can move maneuver around in when you're putting these on. Kind of just leave the cables kind of hang over to the side. We do zip tie these in place. And you want to know which power supply, when you're using these B250 motherboards, which one's going to be your primary because you're going to have the CPU cable and you're going to have the PATA 4-pin uh, Molexes connected so that it, it does matter where you plug or where you put this power supply at. Make sure this is nice and solid on these. That does move a little if you push it. And you will want to make sure all the cables are accessible. No word on the P104s, right? No word on the P104s. I do have a person looking into it for me. Um, and they're supposed to be getting back to me on the P104s. I've seen, I've seen things posted about them. And I have put an inquiry out. We're just plugging in the main motherboard connector. I like getting those plugged in and then I kind of zip tie the, the power supplies in place. Back towards the back of the, the case here. Or the, the rack here. The GPU limit on the board is IRQ related, or uh, no? So when we do were doing our testing, we thought it was going to be PCIe lane uh, limited, but we were able to get 21 GPUs with the eight P106s. So we were able to go 13 full GPUs and eight of the P106s, and we were still rocking. But the second we tried to put it in the 22nd, we started getting uh, out of out of memory issues and just random issues that uh, look like we were at our hard limit of 21. Um, I'd still like to take a shot at it again at some point, maybe her early in 2018. If we get those P10, um, we get those P104s. I would like to take a shot at it again on trying to put some more GPUs on it than 21. At breaking that limit. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to for that. Yeah, and we can see if we can bust a world record again. Um, so, debating of just moving this, getting this to where they can see this before I open up the rest of these. I'm going to take the camera over here so you guys can get a close up for the, the loyal viewers that have been watching this here so and we'll throw it on night shot if the lighting is bad so let's do see so we got the 13 GPUs set up and you can see how the angled aluminum we have here 
we did have a have to put this is about a seven inch it goes down into this little let me move this keyboard so the way these racks have it is they have this like little midpoint here that holds the the rack this way from a like a t-member so the wood kind of goes down in there we did double sided type to hold that and then that tower strut and holds the angled aluminum here which the gpu sets butted up against that in the back so you can see each of the gpus and in the space in here is just enough to where the risers are not i mean they're just they have the enough angle to arc up and not or you know have a little arch there but doesn't really interfere with the riser and that's that that's set up there Go. I'm trying not to get the reflections there and you can see how this little section here just goes this is a sheet screw that holds right in between this this angled aluminum piece is six inches from the top of this and we just have it flush with that and then the other one sets in right in the inside of it and there's a sheet screw that holds that one in place and then you can see this way the, the white surface there is the two-sided tape laid out and it's exactly the right thickness to have the GPUs just sit right up in there and make that connection. So that's the setup. And then in the back we have the 850 P2s, three of them spaced accordingly, about, about eight and a half, nine inches away from each other. And they're set up supplying the power to that. So if we can come back here a little further, you guys can see we're essentially plugged right there planning nice yeah so these are eight amp banks and that's eight amp 240 so that's equivalent to almost 16 amp you know like 110 normal so we got two of the power supplies here we're gonna have a and that's the other the other PDU for the, the lower machines. Lost the feed. <laughs> How, how's the, uh, did it come back on the other side? Uh, you're still on night vision, you're on 25 seconds. Okay. Well, hopefully go back to the uh, other screen and make sure that I didn't drop the session. I don't think I did. Okay, good. So then here are the 30 amp connectors, you know, the 30 amp connections. And we have those two and those go up and connect into this particular setup here. And those go over to the fuse box with two 30 amp separate connections. So hopefully that gives you guys a close up of what we have going. So essentially we're replicating this setup. Still team six going back in for a nice shot. And there is the configuration we have where we're leaving the extra, the last six banks here on the right on section C 
is off. You know, like we don't have connections in for those. So we're using everything from left to right on this board on the riser side. Let's see if we can get this back and not drop. <laughs> Did it finally drop on your screen? Oh, that was a while ago. So hopefully you guys like that as a walkthrough. That part done. We've got one of these done. Push this over to the side. Got another one to do. Oh yeah. So yeah, the no fee is definitely working because it knocked it knocked the uh, GPUs down from from 30 30 uh, mega hash down to 24.4. So we're just gonna see if this thing reboots or not. It's a pretty significant drop for that no fee. Throw that over there. What other uh, questions do they have? If they have any, I'm just gonna continue to work to get this thing done. Quickly. And EBGA's gotta love us. Again, all this stuff just purchased. Not, none of this stuff is acquired for review. This is all real. Stuff to purchase. This, uh, the C. Uh, I know one of the questions that come up is how do we connect it to the 30 amp? And we have. These little C13 to C14 connectors, which is how it plugs into the the PDU. And essentially, you just plug in the power supply cable into that, and then that part, which has essentially looks like a female connector, plugs into the PDU. Throwing that over there. We're gonna need that. We go to plug it in. We do not need the four pin Molex on this one. This is a secondary power supply. What are we up to, people wise? So, 200. Now we're up to 295 and we're just dropping to 279. Nice. Well, some people got to see the walkthrough and that's probably what they wanted to see. Now, a lot of people ask me too on the plugging in the power supplies, where do the particular uh, VGA connectors go? Because it does matter on some power supplies where the single eight pins and then the six eight pin ones do connect. If you look at your power supplies manual, right in one of the very first few spots, you'll have a very uh, colorful menu option here. On the EVGAs, it's the multiple color uh, section here that shows where particular 
um, connections are supposed to be plugged into. So like, uh, let me bring it up here. Your, and this one's gonna be, not show us as well, but um, you'll have your specifications on one side and then you're gonna have where it wants you to plug your six you, like on this particular one it's saying VGA uh, on the 650p2 it matters on the 750 and the 850p2 it does not matter where you plug any of the VGA's in this the single 8 pin or the 6 8 pin combo can go into any of the one, VGA's 1 through 4 on the 650p2, however, VGA one and two, on oh, that's that one's okay too. The the thousand watt and the 1200 watt P2 though, VGA one and two is where it wants you to have your your dual connectors at because it has a better amp load on those. So you do have to look at that. I kind of take that for granted, and I don't usually talk about that. And then people have brought it up a few times, saying, "Hey, you never talk about this." And sometimes I just forget that some folks is the first time getting into this space and they just start plugging stuff in because it just connects. So you have to look out for that. You know, manuals most of the time are kind of meh. But on this kind of stuff, you probably want to check it if you've never experienced it or you haven't watched a video on it. Just take the three minutes and review the manual. It might save you some headaches later. Oh my god, he's reading a manual, says your wife. Oh my god, he's reading a manual. <laughs> I'm not reading the manual. I'm telling other people to read the manual. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Is that what they say? <laughs> Alright, so we do not need the CPU plug. Yay. On this one. She's answering your questions too. We haven't got any super chats on this, have I? No. Okay. Everybody's Everybody's light, light pocketed. <laughs> just after, just after Christmas, they're like, tough times. <laughs> Crypto's down. Times are tough. Times are tough. <laughs> Bitcoin's under, Bitcoin, what is Bitcoin right now? Like 14 something? It was 15 earlier. What do we plan on doing for cooling in the summertime? That's a good question. We're going to figure that out in the summertime. <laughs> We're going to figure that out in the summertime. Uh, so again, the ventilation system is a big deal. You can also have some stand-up air conditioner units. It just depends on how much really this is going to output. Um, 60 GPUs is quite a bit. So having this down in a basement area and the ability to exhaust it out, it, there are a lot of better options than most. Um, but a standalone air conditioner unit for this particular space is more than likely what would occur and happen. Alright, we're good there. Probably build a box around it. Yeah, we'll just build a box around it and be able to ventilate it appropriately. Let's flip this around actually because I want that fan up. I'm just going to slide this through. And we'll just put this cabling just off to the side. How about I just lost connection. Someone wants to know what the best GPU for mining is. Mining what? It depends. The best all around price performance GPU out there if you can find them um, is probably the Vega 56 
followed closely by the 1060 GTX. But the Vega 56, if you're paying more than like $550, then you're probably just steer clear of it. Let me get those zip tied down here in a second. All right, let's close this. Unfortunately, like Vega is just like a myth. I'm seeing the Vegas a lot like go like the the Furies. If you look at AMD, AMD didn't put a lot of those out. Uh, the Fury and the Fury XT and the Nanos, there were very limited supply of them. You couldn't do much of anything. And some people are probably like, Andy, what? Nanos? What are those? Those were little tiny Fuji XT processored, low power at the time really decent mining cards but you could just never get them and they were super expensive they were five six hundred bucks and then amd came out with the 390 series and the 380s and 380x's and those kind of went away i'm having a feeling the vega is going to be that way until they can finally get that Polaris architecture on, or the Vega architecture on something they can mass produce. Great white buffalo unicorn. The great man. Yeah. Third power supply for this. You're not on repeat, it is just what we're doing right now with this well, we're gonna this is per machine we have five of these machines so quite a bit of power supplies Not this one you buy a couple of these a couple different types of the C, the C13, 14. Oh, the, uh, 30 amps. There are more in that box. I think. Yeah, I got them. Here we go. I'm just trying to get them ready for there. Get behind them. I need another one for over there. All right, because that's needs to get plugged in there. This is the last power supply. For this build and then we'll put the processor in there the memory zip tie these power supplies down and then we'll put the two-sided tape down on the inside here and then start placing gpus I'm getting ready to uh put risers on them i'll actually put the risers on the gpus I'll snap the risers on. I'm going to put the, the GPU in place onto the two-sided tape, let the riser kind of hang, and then we'll, we'll put it together. We already have a drive stage. This is CPU. I don't need that. <laughs> what did I say? Some guy had a, a rig of six RX 470s on a 1,000 watt PSU, and the power cable melted. Um. Yeah. And wants to know what could it be. Four, so you had four, six RX 470s mm -hmm. on a 1,000 watt PSU. Was the power cable mining? connected to my PSU melted, sad face. Was he dual mining and what power supply type was it? This is my first question I would ask. And then which, yeah, which power? 470s draw a lot of juice from the riser and it's probably a SATA cable that melted. What PSU and what? And which power connector melted instead of the power cable. Well there's lots of power cables and they all do different things. And I'm betting it was a SATA connector. Or 
he was on a 15 amp connection with a whole bunch of other stuff and this power supply just pulled a little too much amps on it. Four seventies use a lot of juice, especially if you're dual mining. They put a lot of amp load on the actual PCB. Your actual riser connector will actually pull like 60 watts of power, and that just crushes the uh, the SATA connection because they're not really rated at that. Other CPU, we don't need that one. Now we've been taking a lot of B-roll footage of all this, guys, and I plan on making an episode to kind of show people how to do this. We will make a much more meticulous version of this, kind of like a package that's more dedicated, that might be more of a a content that's specialized for like if somebody's wanting to do this and wants to um, you know have that through like a purchase with an extremely detailed type of situation it'll take a lot more a lot more time for me to edit something like that if they're trying to build you know replicate this kind of setup and need very specialized uh, attention to it but Right now, I'm just trying to get all the free content out for everybody. All right, we got the third one here. I'm going to come around and put that in through the back versus feeding it through the front. For all uh, 13 of those mining right now? All 13 are mining. It's still cold down here, bro. It's warmer, though. It's warmer by me. The ambient temperature down here is pretty cold. Before this thing was mining, we were probably at at least 60, if not lower, probably 55 degrees down here. It's pretty cold. And these kind of set. I'm actually going to zip these down now for I can start pulling and tugging on the uh, power supplies. Oh, some dude came back. Power cable connected to PSU black one. It was the one that melted. The big one? The actual power cable, yeah. Was he running the actual one that came with the PSU? Or was he running a lower end? If he was using, so like when these PSUs, like these ones have thicker power cables because they're made for a thing. If you're you, if you was using like a 600 watt power cable with a thousand watt PSU, there's a good chance he just cooked it. So I'm using four. Four zip ties here. You could use bigger zip ties. We just bought a thousand pack of a certain size, which is not big enough to fit around all this. And we are getting these connected now. Doesn't matter. Again, there's different ways to strap things. You can pick your own way. It's just a matter that you don't want things to move around that much once you're once you kind of get it into place. When I brought up the BBT conference, the Bitcoin conference in Miami. Can yeah, Bitcoin conference in Miami. We will we'll be there. I do have a. I should hopefully have an episode out here real soon that has like some details for that. Um. I actually had one of the people that do the uh, some of the post editing stuff for us over, and we just had we just were looking at different ideas to put that video together. And we just haven't got to it all the way yet. But that is the 19th or the uh, 17th of January through 
roughly the 20th, I believe, for the conference, or the you know, 19th or 20th for the conference, but we're going to be down there for a few more days. Kind of enjoying the space down there in Miami. So a setup like this is is a couple day build. I mean, this is not a a fast build. From the actual physics of it, you're talking probably per rig three hours if you have everything you need. Just from a matter of taking everything out of a box, getting everything kind of placed and zip tied down to give you kind of a time measurement, you can speed that up if you lean out some processes involved in that or if you use the same equipment all the time and there's not a lot of customization we're just locking that down see now that's locked down solid that ain't going anywhere zip ties everywhere Big pack of thousand zip ties is not that bad. We got BBT Brett not looking at the screen, so if you guys are asking questions, right now I'm not looking at a screen. He is not looking at the screen either. So when he gets back and you hear his voice, you'll be able to ask a question again and I will answer it. I'm actually going to come around to the other side because I got the 30 amp connection. Plugged in. I don't want to mess with that since we got the rig mining. Rig's cooking away right now, sitting at 362 mega hash. It's at 28.8 mega hash per card. We will zoom here. I'll zoom into that so you guys can see that cooking right now. You guys can't see it right now. Here's the current. It's been up for 11 minutes. 28.8. 360. Go that way. Here we go. Kind of show them. I told them that you were, you were off. Yeah. So. Getting snacks. Getting snacks. Yeah, you gotta stay. Some food. Some feeling good. Nothing is super warm. You're just getting this last power supply strapped down. I don't want it moving once I get it going. Again, zip ties are your friends on these builds. Nice and solid. Doing the four, the four uh, versus like a, even two uh, zip ties, just because I can pull each corner and get it nice and tight and solid on this thing, where it doesn't move. Somebody asked if you'll be showing the finished version of the six uh, X ten seventy Ti rig that you built in and out of the case. Yes. So. I will show the, the finished version of that. It's actually been running. I'm just making sure that's running stable. It's been rock star stable. Um, we do have, it's been just, I've been letting it cook. It's been doing some good work. So, people think that you're sweating. I'm not sweating. It's just a shirt, people. 
It's not bits be dripping. It's that's not bits be dripping. <laughs> this is the shirt color. I am not sweating. I am a big guy, but I do not sweat actually that much. I'm a big guy because I like to eat. If I settled my eating down a little bit, I'd be skinny. Because I'm actually pretty active. I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff all the time. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm all over. I just eat like a boss. If I took a hiatus from eating for like... And I actually, I was thinking about doing that with having an audience and stuff. About putting a challenge out there for myself. Of like... You know, a 2018... Can I make a lifestyle change on how I eat and get skinny and just freak everybody else out? He eats GPUs. I eat GPUs. <laughs> It's just, I mean, you can, everybody can diet. You just got to make a lifestyle change. And I like food. My food's got to be so good. <laughs> Somebody said, make a workout merch line titled Bits Be Dripping. Bits Be Dripping. <laughs> I'm getting all the uh, power supplies plugged into the PDU right now. <laughs> Trying not to get shocked and electrocuted. Something like, did you just turn on the heater or is that a big fan? <laughs> oh, and then they, they, they hear the heater? Uh huh. I can turn that off, but it's only going to get colder. <laughs> it's only going to get colder. <laughs> those plugged in but turned off. You just want them um, plugged in and hot. All right. And I like separating the power cables to where I'm going to be from what I'm going to be using and needing. So I kind of do that next and then I start plugging things in. So you can start from the back and find the power or the GPU cables, kind of pull those through, get them separated, and you know where they're at. As for that one, this is the CPU cable, which is going to go under everything, and that gets plugged into the PC or the uh, motherboard. Make an exercise bike that generates hash. That gen there you go. Generates power for that hash making. And there it is for the Santa. And then I want the PATA up front. Which, these are the four pin Molexes. I'm going to throw over here. Go around. this guy those plug together let's get the Processor. Extra little guy there. We're using i3 7100s. I'm kind of partial to these. I've used the 3900s. I've used the 4400G. You know, uh, what are the uh, 
the Pentiums. I just like the i3 7100s just because they're a little more, especially if you're going to be using Windows. If you're going to go simple mining, you can go with a little slower processor. Put that guy in there. Try not to drop those things. Those things are done if you drop them, especially on a corner. They just don't work. Oh, look at that. How about that? That guy in there. If you're using Windows though, the, the 7100 seem to work pretty well. From our experience. Get down. We'll use the basic cooling that comes with this. And we're using the the thermal paste that's on that because Again, it's just pretty much running idle. We're not doing any kind of special mining with the CPU on this. Somebody asked, can we see how you're plugging the PSUs into the PDUs and an explanation why? Yeah, I'll take the camera back there and I'll explain how I got them plugged in there. That way you guys can. But let me, I'll get this one plugged in and then I'll, uh, I'll take you guys for an adventure again. Push this back here and then I'm going to zip these down. Once I get the power connectors plugged into the motherboard, I actually will take those and I will zip those down because those have so much torque in them. If you just move things a little bit and that power cable, especially if you have three of them plugged into the motherboard, it's going to twist this thing all to hell. So you got to kind of get, get them plugged in, get them where you want them, and then you take that excess cable and you got to zip those up and make sure that they're, they're staying off to the side because they're just so... They're so thick that they will give you some hell. What we're going to do is I'm going to come back in the back real quick and pull the other power cables for the second power supply back. That way it's not in the in the way again this is what i was talking about about separating your power supplies especially if you're running three of them you want to have your cables kind of in their own little zone so you can kind of get an inventory and account of where how you need to get things plugged in and everything has its own little zone this gets especially hard if you have like a 1600 watt power supply and multiple 1600 watt power supplies because they have so many connectors Ryan Leon wants you to show how you modded the parts to get them up to 28. They will see that when I when they see uh we get it plugged into Windows. In this build. There's that one. I'm gonna plug in the third power supply into the motherboard with the 24 pin and then I will fix its wires. It's a lot of reshuffling, a lot of jostling when you guys are building something like this because you have so many, so many different variables you're playing with and you're trying to get everything kind of just to fit right in a pretty decently confined space. You know, and there's different there's different shelves you can get. Some of them have like the flat surface. Problem with that is, is the heating on those I've seen, at least with a few that I've helped with and created, is they they kind of hot box. So if you have a setup like this, and this is a flat surface, they can't they'll just exhaust out the back. But you get this kind of convection thing going on in the middle. Or if you have all this open crate, the, the heat is just rising right now. And you can actually come in with, on the sides with fans and blow through and really pull that air up. And then if you're exhausting out of the back at the top, 
you can really create a good airflow under all this and all of it flows well because these are all open grate. It's kind of like having a really big open air case. GPU, GPU, this one here it is. GPU. Okay, that's all set up. Now I can get the boys zipped down so they're not getting in my way. That's the, when I say big boys, I'm talking the big 24 pens. I want to kind of take the torque out of them by just collapsing them and zip tying them to where they don't go anywhere. I want those to stay put. And even if it's just one loop, it doesn't matter. You put some torque on this, this thing ain't going anywhere. Oh shit, we got a super chat. <laughs> I missed it. We missed the super chat. How many cards can Windows run with the new update you mentioned? Also, will NiceHash recognize more than eight, or will we still have? I don't know about NiceHash, especially the new. If they're if they're back up and running, I heard that they might be. Um, we'll have to take a look. I haven't had time to look at NiceHash's new stuff, but with Windows, we were able to get 21 GPUs running in Windows, and that was with this board, and it was with the P106 and eight of the slots and then I was using PCIe riser extensions with 13 other GPUs. So I had 13 retail GPUs and eight P106s and we were able to get 21 running. If you look at that video it's the 21 GPU mining rig. I think it has world record in the in the naming convention and if you kind of zip towards the end you'll see some pretty excited uh, BBT Carter in that one. That was a fun episode, our fun live stream. Again, you guys got to see all that live. But we were discovering it together. I do like those, those kind. All right, so this one is now kind of in place. All these are there. Get this in. Keep those out. I like the zip tie or the pieces there. I'm throw this off to the side. It's like that super chat cut out. Like it said, also, will nice hash recognize more than eight or will we still have and then it ended? Oh, yeah. Well, if that person asked it, who was it? Joshua Riddick. What did he super chat? That was a, how many cars can Windows wrong with okay. the update? You answered that. All right, so now that we got that, now it's time for um, memory, missing memory on the G, on the computer. I had the memory. What did I do with the memory? Oh, here it is. I had the memory. Looking for the memory. Sports from Micron. We're using the first slot for this. That's DIM A1. Somebody asked why not use those uh, Chinese 2400 watt PSUs for this project. Um, so we do have another mining rig with the family, the BBT fam that's using it on a setup like this, and we're just seeing how that will run. Um, we did, we were ordering actually four of them and they got back ordered. Uh, they've been doing a lot of, a lot of business evidently. So we just went with the, the 850 P2s price wise. I mean, with the way this is set up right here, I mean, I'm, f I'm fine with it personally, but it comes down to BBT fam if they want to use it or not. Uh, we went with, uh, EVGA Supernovas instead. Um. I haven't had any issues with that 2400 watt power supply, and again, one of our one of our uh, 
local folks are actually using the one that I have on one of their mining rigs to see kind of more of a long-term test with it. But we know that these work and we know that they have long life warranties and that's part of it when it comes down to buying stuff from from China, especially power supplies is, you know, how many of you guys have returned risers? It's you kind of a, point. Uh, another super chat. They want to see the, can you show which outlets on PDU PSU for each set? Yeah, I'll do that right now before I muck this up. So we're going to, we're going to take another, another, uh, night shot possibly. Now that this is plugged in, let's take a little venture. I'm going to hold the, the connection. So we come back here. Let me go into night shot mode. So we have the three power supplies here now. The ones that we just set up and those come out and we're still in this top PDU so on the back of the PDU we are running in each bank there's three banks on the back here and we're running two two and two so we got six power supplies across the two rigs so the the first rig that's been running is running on the first two down there and then one right here which are the three PSUs we're gonna take one more from rig two here and then the two right here on this end so this is gonna do this entire top rack here the bottom ones when I get those done are gonna go on that bottom PDU that you see down Is going to go we're gonna split it on the front we're gonna split the main connector the main power supply on the first one here and then I'm gonna put the other two on the bottom one so this one will hold up the motherboards power supply on the front bank right here on this one and then the bottom one will hold the two in the front right there on the other on the other PDU so that's the connection setup that we have right now with essentially 60 cards on those two PDUs using 850 P2s hopefully that answered that super chat Yeah. There we go. I think we're there. Might need to plug this. Uh, I don't know if I brought in the actual charger for that. Cause I've been running a battery this whole time on that. Oh really? Yeah, it's right here. We'll have to eventually plug this in. Try to do that now. Let's see what we're looking at. Our cameras been running on battery power this whole time. Running a stream like a boss. Let's see. Try to make sure this is nice and tight because this is gonna torque it. Pull that monitor out. Huh? <laughs> Don't pull that monitor out. That would be hilarious on TV. Uh, on live stream. Like, oh, there goes the TV. <laughs> Luckily, those things are only $59 now. All right. There's some power situations here. All right, so all that's in there. We got to do the two way tape here. For the inside part, before I can start getting GPUs up, and we're going to be putting the. Oh, did I get the memory all the way in there? Yes, I did. 
Memory's in there now. So don't forget to tell everybody to smash that like button. Don't forget to tell everybody to smash that. Exactly. So now we're going to be doing the two-sided tape, which is just on the inside lip of this. It essentially runs the... Where's that? That, uh... I'm going to need that. Scissors. That has to line up perfect. Or close to perfect. Otherwise it folds. That's a sit over there. So again, we're doing this because we do not... I do not want to have to do a zip tie with this setup. So I run the length of this and then I cut two sided and then I gotta go set that. Again, a, a pack of this is the 3M two-sided tape. You see the kind of color there. It's about nine bucks for about nine and a half yards of that. So more than enough for this whole this whole setup. But it is one of those just expenses that you just don't realize you have. You want to make sure that that's lined up nice and clean, and that holds. When you lay it, it uses tension just to hold the GPU down on this side. Now, we will do it, we will get to check to see how the heat does with this, because sometimes with two sided tape, you get a heat issue where it wants to peel up. But really, this isn't, it's just sitting on a ledge. So it shouldn't matter. Alright, I want the bubbles out. For right now I'm just leaving that on there without peeling the top yet. And then we're going to start pulling, putting GPUs in with risers. And then I can start to plug in, plug those together here in a second. And you'll see, so we have more than enough SATA connectors to almost go a single SATA per riser because we're splitting it across three PSUs. So we will have to go, if we go to P108 or uh, P106 NVIDIA cards, if we ever add that to this setup, we will have to then have two cards per riser, per, two, two cards per SATA strand. But each of these PSUs have four SATA strands, and that's two per, that's eight, that's 16 total cards, we only have 13, so we can actually go single, single SATAs to each thing. So having no issues with dual mining with that kind of setup where you're just powering each card with one SATA connector. So that's pretty convenient. So we're gonna get these. Let's get the risers. Start bringing some of them over here. To... How long are we on so far? You say? One hour forty eight. Longest build ever. These are version 6C, 6-pin, black PCB, and these are a little longer cables. I think these are the 60-centimeter ones, so a little more length to them. 
pull those in, click that down, and then we'll start placing these here in a second. I do need to pull the double sided tape top. Start that. You do that, you just pull part of that, throw that off to the side. That way it sets in there right. I like working one side out. There you go. Yep, yeah, I'll grab them. Plug that down. Spin that. Turn it. Get that right to the edge. And up. And that two sided tape will stick and hold the GPU in place. And then I will go back through on the back and I'll plug in all the, the SATA connectors. To those once I kind of get them set because I can see the SATA connectors and again there are only one SATA per since we're using three GPUs or three power supplies oh and I usually get the actual power plugged in first to I didn't on this one where is the little Well, I threw them in that box, didn't I? I typically use these extra twisties that I take off the connectors to tie up to shore up one of these extra six eight pins. Because for right now, on all of the, all the power supplies, besides one connector, we'll take a six to an eight because there's enough. There's twelve. There's twelve actual eight pins on the on these power supplies besides one of the power supplies we will use one of the six pins will convert to an eight and that will give us the 13 for this build otherwise we have a one for one on the connectors which greatly simplifies it and you don't need a lot of crazy build stuff to put it together six eight pin connectors sometimes <coughs> they come apart it makes it a challenge when you're putting it into a recessed position GPU like the pulses and then I'm gonna spin that around Actually, I don't want that to come on the other side there, so you not want it right there. From this side. And that's really just to keep it away from the other GPUs. And anybody that's put together mining rigs knows that, you know, if you feed them up between each other, you'll get the the power connectors will go, they'll get in the uh, fans of the other supporting cards next to it. So you kind of want to feed those from the back and feed them in. That way it keeps that, that line with the cable from not getting up into the GPU's fan. All right, so on the next one, we're going to do it right and have it where... plugging this part in first and what I was saying by recessed is this thing actually has a shroud around the 8 pin that goes up over the 8 pin so even getting it in there when you have access to it a little better 
is that, but you know we have to feed all these up from over. Feed this up over. There we go. is about a hand width if people are wondering how am I measuring that the hand width for my knuckles is exactly a, about an inch and a half so I've measured it and as long as I have it there I'm an inch I'm exactly an inch and a half between so I know it's kind of an archaic ogre way of doing it but it works and gives me the exact spacing I need. But it is an ogre way to do it. Sapphire loves us. <laughs> what they say? She's laughing. A lot of tax questions, and somebody said, Can we start a GoFundMe to have you get an accountant live on stream? <laughs> an accountant live on stream. Uh, I mean, the problem with the tax is it's going to be very predicated on, well, so the government tax is one thing, but state tax and all that's going to be different for what state you live in, country. It's kind of a narrow audience thing. I mean, there's a generality, pay your taxes, but there's a if you're looking for very specific order of execution type of stuff, it's pretty finite. I think the the tax code's pretty straightforward of what you have to pay. The parts that are going to be a little gray are if you interpret the code as it stands right now that every every gain including any of your trade activity it can be considered a taxable event like if you're just trading ETH on Poloniex and you made a trade for let's say Stellar, and Stellar took an 80% increase to BTC value, or to USD value, because it's going to be against USD value, not any other currency value, and you just got an increase, technically that's a taxable event. But the exchanges are going to provide you with the ability to turn that in, because they're just going to give you a spreadsheet of all the P&L activity. And any tax attorney is just going to say, well, give me all that stuff. And they'll do the math for you. For a fee. On top of 
any of the other mining proceeds that you got. That's that's the math. But it comes down to what is the majority of people are going to do, and the majority of people are probably going to do is any of that activity that they have done by cashing out and those activities through the know your you know your customer sites through like Coinbase and any of that other stuff. Any activity you have in there is reported, or it can be reported. So, you know, the tax system is a voluntary system in the U.S., so you're volunteering that information based on predicated on the rules. And if somebody comes back and does a verification and you didn't do that, then that's when you're going to have tax liability out there. So what I would say is if you're doing any kind of cashing in activity, if that's the stuff that you're going to have to pay tax on, and until the systems get more refined it's going to be very it's going to be a very uh volunteer system for you to to declare your trade activity so if your trade activity is on cryptopia and that's a netherlands place and they're not cutting off w2s to the irs i mean it's on the individual for doing that so I'm not going to tell you guys which what's to do, what's to not. I'm not an authority in that area. But I would just say that if you read and interpret the law, that's what the law is. It's very cut and dry. It's not there's not it's not confusing. It could be interpreted differently. And I think most people are interpreted if you're exercising it to fiat, you pay tax on that. And you're going to pay tax at capital gains. And the Bush tax cuts are going away, or I think they've went away this year, so then you're going to be at 20% long-term capital gains. So, all right, we've got four in there. Let's get some more to use. Nice that we already got these out of the boxes. We still have boxes of GPUs that we got to take apart. All right, so we got the first power supply and all of its all of its adapters plugged into those first four. We're gonna take the next power supplies. VGA cables and you guys can see right now with what I'm doing is why I said separate them because right there that's how quick I was able to go back there and just grab the VGA cables because they're already separated and anybody that's been built, building rigs knows when you go to try to go through the, the mesh of cables now on this power supply I did it on the other one too I'm going to use the expander wherever that's at it's not this one we had we had the other ones i had four of them i used two of them over here or i used one of them over here i need some of these coast folks are checking out they said uh, if you're not done tomorrow keep streaming if you're not done. there we go these coast folks are checking out you know what time is it right now 11 11 11 11 make a wish that's some that's some free stuff so on this one we're going to take one of the six eight pin combos and we're going to take the six pin adapter this is in the description and we're expanding it to an eight we got a six and an eight so now we got an eight and eight and we're doing that because we need, we're doing 13 GPUs here, not 12. If we were doing 12, then these three PSUs would be enough without any kind of adapters. So we needed the, the expansion. And as I said before, the other one is an eight, the two eights or two sixes. That's the other cable that you see in there. We're not using that for right now. On this build, we'll use this. How many of people are we down to? We'll sub 200. 
259 still. Holy hell. People, people stick it in for the long haul. Everybody's in for the long haul. Alright, so let me plug this in. So I go ahead and I plug these in, even though I will you will see me unplug some of these when I go to first boot up this this machine. But from just an accountability, I plug all the risers in. That way I have, I know that I've plugged everything in. And then I will shift these over. I will plug, I will unplug the three risers when we first boot up Windows because you can only, well, we're gonna use PowerShell to to mod these BIOSes, PowerShell only sees 10 GPUs in Windows at a time. So while the Crypt Flaw Creator update did update it to where I could see more than eight, PowerShell only sees eight. Make sure that's there down there and it's nice and tight. Feeding these through. And this riser has been already plugged in. Five GPUs, five plugs in. We lose Miss BBT already? Oh no. Oh She's no. in for the long haul too. She's in for the long haul too. Yeah. Had a girl. I've I've been abandoning Miss BBT the last few days, helping get this done. I'm gonna owe her a a good dinner. You can go out to dinner on Friday night. There we go. I'll take you guys out. Well, Andrea's steakhouse. Oh, getting ahead of myself here. I'm going to plug in the... I'm going to use this 8-pin in the center. Now let's get this in. Spun to the right. In. And down. Nice and easy. Make sure the pin there. Get this plugged in. Nice and smooth. Feed this through. Make sure we have it to where it's all kind of together in the loops. Because after this, after this all running and good, we'll get in there and we'll zip tie things. We'll make everything look nice and clean. It already looks pretty clean here in the front. We do have a little power switch kind of hanging here, but this will all get cleaned up and it'll look nice and clean. I think it'll be nice and tight and it'll allow good airflow between all the all the mining rig or all the mining cards. So this will be nice and nice and clean. I am a little slow and meticulous with it, but I want to make sure we do it right. a rhythm to it. Everybody have a good Christmas? Hopefully. Or Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year if you don't celebrate any kind of this time of year, but do celebrate the fact of a new year. We are a worldwide, multiple cultures and religions and people's activity. Okay. <coughs> nice 
nice and settled. Let's make sure that's fed right. Straight into the back. Getting any good stuff from Chris for responses on that, or are they all comatose? Happy Christmas, Hana Kwanzaa Ka. Hana Kwanzaa Ka. Oh, I said Happy Festivus. Get this one to get zipped. Another zip tie around here. Zip ties. Ah, got one. So we don't need this extra six pin here. I was thinking on the We've done a lot of B-roll footage on the first rig. I was thinking on the lat in the next two, when I get those done, is that we're gonna time lapse that one. So I'm just going real quick. Well, quick and is a relative term. Okay, that. Let's do it. These. Appropriate stuff. And over. Mm -hmm. Well, showing a little. <laughs> Got uh. That happens. That happens. <laughs> Want to keep this PG though. <laughs> Last thing you want to see is a Carter full moon. <laughs> Let's spice this up. Let's spice this up. out after on the next shelf down are you going to put the cards on the opposite side for better airflow no and that's thinking that it is better airflow not necessarily so the other side of the shelf is for the p106s when those come in to get added to this these will be in the front again and then we're going to be pulling some air from both sides Pushing back out this way is we'll put an exhaust exiting outside. So a lot of the typical builds you'll see like this all come in from the front like this. And we're going to pull the air out. Because I mean all the air, right now all these things are not putting any air out this way. The way these fans work is they kind of spin upward. They do have a vent here, but that's not where the air is coming out at on these cars. They're coming out from the top. It's supposed to come out this way, but since these are open air cases, most of all the heat's coming out from the top. So the bottom cards are going to push some heat up through these ones. So these ones will get a little warmer than the cards at the bottom, but we are going to put fans on both sides of this to really pull some air through it. This again is an out next to an exterior wall, and it is very cold out here, so they should be able to be ventilated pretty nicely. These cards are actually doing pretty good. They're holding about 60... 62 Celsius right now. They're on 30, 
A couple cards are at 34% fan speed. Some cards are at 47% fan speed right now, and there's no external, no external stuff going on here. So these uh, sapphire pulses actually cool very well. We do have, I believe, a slight undervolt. I will give you guys the settings on these that we're running. You could actually type the setting if you want, right? The, uh, it, when you get a chance, you can type that setting. Put some glitter on that splitter. <laughs> what? <laughs> some Paul Weather said, put some glitter on that splitter. <laughs> I'm talking about my, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. BBT said instead of glitter beard. Instead of what? <laughs> glitter on that side. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Good one, sir. Well played. What does Carter think about Ubik's price and where it's going in 2018? I think Ubik's doing very well. I think it's doing, I mean, Anybody that's been following us, I've, I've been telling people we went long on Ubik. As long as Ubik can take on a lot of the good updates from the Ethereum EIPs that are out there and kind of falls lockstep with some of the newer feature sets that are going to be coming out, I think it'll do pretty well. Um, I mean, price is one of those things that's relative. I mean, we'll see. I think Ubik caught up. If you look at its price versus BTC, it's just catching up with what everything else did. Um, but it is pretty nice. I don't know what Ubik's price is right now. I think it was like four fifty ish. So I can do a price check on it. Four seventy. I did see a peak five. Um, there's no reason why, given the set of circumstances, Ubik isn't you know a ten dollar, twenty dollar coin. It could easily be a ten to twenty dollar coin. It all comes down to what kind of DApps are they going to put out there? Do they do they take in? Can it become a cheaper version of an Ethereum DApp system? You know, to where it's it's running. It's the cheaper alternative to run some of your DApps on, and they get some they get some good partnerships and ICOs that come through them that actually do stuff. It's a it's a platform coin. I, I, I like plat I've always said to you guys I like platforms. I like EOS. I like things that are putting a platform out there. You know, you got expanse, you got you got any any derivative of of that has development, a development core to it, any derivative of a of a platform based coin has an opportunity to really get some good price action as people start to discover what it is and if it's a cheaper version of ethereum that's taking a lot of ethereum's eips and implementing them and and when i say eips i talk in ethereum improvement plans it's essentially the roadmap with source code that's approved and disapproved and tested on testnet that gets implemented in hard forks and soft forks so I'm long on Ubik. I think it has a good it has a good development core. It's been producing a roadmap, and it's starting to show. We had our first request for a uh, Crypto Knight or XMR hash rate. Uh, well, we can push. Uh, I can't do it on. Uh, we have to do some configuration on virtual memory on this build if we want to try to do Crypto Knight. And Crypto Knight with 13 cards and Windows is like sketchy. Like it doesn't work very well because the virtual memory doesn't exceed much. You have to really go high on it. We could do it on. Uh, I mean, we could try to run it. I don't think. I don't know what kind of. Let's sit here. Let's sit. Advanced. 
environmental variables. Environmental variables. Performance. Vance. I'll run it for you. I'm running a pretty large file right now. I just don't think. And notice we haven't crashed anymore. I put that no fee on there. So I think I did confirm Claymore's auto switching thing was crashing this. Whenever it was trying to run Claymore's, we've ran now for an hour and eight minutes on this without it crashing. We were getting a blue screen on this and I think it was all to do whenever Claymore was switching over to his. When he was mining, it was crashing the crashing the uh, miner. Let's look here. So, I go to choice 17. It's probably going to crash hard, but we'll see. It's got, it's got 40 gigs of virtual memory, so it should be... What would you switch to? I'm um, trying XMR. Just briefly to see what it does. Somebody asked earlier about the PCIe uh, limit of the CPU to 16 and how you can get 19 cards on a rig. Oh, it just blew up here. Uh, because it, it uses PCIe sh lane sharing, so it's not limited one for one because we're running in a reduced mode and it can handle it. It doesn't aside because we're using risers, it's uh it's not it's not limited by the thing. So we got a we got a hard fell. That actually froze the machine up. Oh, it blew the driver. It actually tried, it actually got it was getting uh, 804, well one GPU got 714, one got 804, one got eight, 838, so 800 hash, but then it blew the driver. Yep, and we just crashed. So, uh, again, I think that we, we could get it working, I think, on Linux. Using uh, one of the XMR miners on Linux. With Windows, there's some stuff you have to do if you're going to be pushing 13 GPUs on XMR. Windows really gets flaky after 8 GPUs when it comes to XMR. So we were able to kind of get it to post almost for a second there and start to run some, but we'll let it reboot and I'll get it back. So we tried it. I mean, they look about with the configuration they have right now. That looks like at about 804, 800 mega hash per card. So 13. What's 13 times 804? You got that? You got that right, man? You got this. Let's see. What we GPUs. 10452. Was it? 10,000. 452. 10,452. So 10,000. And so if you had five rigs, 50,000 XMR. So this would be a this farm will be 50,000, 52,000 XMR. So obviously, have you can more than half of that if you were able to get Vegas, but you'd be spending a lot more. Now XMR uses a lot less power. And look and see what that would put out. What's the what's the what's, the, what's a mine right now on fifty thousand XMR? Fifty thousand hashes. Oh, 
Actually, I'm going to leave these three unplugged because this is what we need to mod first. Yes, gross. 42.47 a month. 42.47? Four, $4,247 a month. Let me get the two more zips. Put those zip ties. How many cards for 50,000 XMR? Somebody is. Well, it'd be 60, right? So, what's 60 times 804? And let's make sure our math is right. I mean, the card was getting 804. With our current forty eight thousand two forty. Yeah, so I mean and then you we were doing thirteen cards times five, right? So that's more of sixty five? The sixty five cards? Thirteen cards times five is sixty five, yeah. Sixty five, yeah. So we we're actually gonna run sixty five cards. So sixty five times eight oh four is the number. That's where the fifty thousand came from. On this on this build. Um, our stream health went to red. We're dropping frames. Really? Yeah. Boo! Oh, it's back. Back to yellow. Black and yellow. Back to yellow. <laughs> Black and yellow. Maybe Black when I went to, oh, I opened that tab for the Monero calculator. Oh. Maybe that site's like mining our, all these new sites, man. I think there's a Tinker Town, I think is one of them. One of the popular old school, like, blog sites. They, uh, their their browser launches a miner. Yeah. That's like a thing now. And people say Bitcoin. They always say, oh, it's a Bitcoin miner. It's not necessarily Bitcoin. I think one of those ones were actually firing Monero. It wasn't firing Bitcoin. So when you hear about a browser firing up uh, a miner, it's not necessarily a Bitcoin miner. It's actually it's actually launching. Something else, which I don't agree with. I don't think uh, I don't think sites should be able to do that. That's some that's some that's some bullshit. They already people already mine the data, man. Let alone your. It's just kind of straight and insulting. Let's just go ahead and mine your. Literally mine with your hardware, without your consent. You know, we're dropping. We're dropping a couple frames of now and then. Yeah, it must be a. More yellow. Well, it's the. Most of the time with frame drops, it's it's just the internet connection. We have blazing slow charter spectrum here, and at my house where we film. Oh, missing the missing the riser. How am I down one riser? Oh, they're right here. I found another one over here, so you opened up another one. Fuck it. We're leaving these three unplugged because Windows has a limit. <coughs> Move this up here. This last one's tricky. Because not a lot of room to do manure in here. Yeah, it's getting pretty bad. What? This is where lagging pretty bad. Mm. Well, I don't know if upstairs is downloading something. Oops.
just a bit outside. Alright. What's that from? Well, I must be going upstairs to check. Let's see if we got some downloading going on upstairs. Alright. Everything's in, there's 13. These three we're holding back on because we can only have 10 in windows. I'm gonna do here now that we're up on here, we're gonna get this mining and then we're gonna take some of the stuff from this where we can So that's going to start mining, make sure that starts mining, and then we're going to plug this one in, and it will bring the camera close to you guys. I'm going to, I got to go find a SATA. More than 40. And this last piece that you guys will get to see some of the BIOS mining stuff real quick, and then we'll try to wrap this up. Probably about 20 minutes or so we'll wrap this stream up. It'll be probably right at three hours. Um, and you guys get to see this. So, but I want to show you the windows portion that portion. What was that? Portion. All right. So I'm gonna get. We need a. I need another SATA. Connected to this. There's not there. Right, you beat them all. I hear you. Oh. <laughs> Long thumb. Yeah, it's no big deal. Do you have a? Uh, I need a SATA for this. Oh, you know what? The motherboard has it. Never mind. Motherboard box. Should have SATAs. I dropped the 205 with the lag. Huh? I dropped the 205 with the lag. Oh, yeah. I told them that I'm going to get this going and I'm going to show them how to do the BIOS mod and then uh, we'll probably wrap this stream up. Because I mean the settings is pretty key. Building hardware is one thing but understanding settings is another. So we got that plugged in. I'm going to plug in the SATAs now, and then we can fire this thing up. And that's back here. Essentially, we can this first one here. Just plugging in the SATAs right now, guys. Almost done there. Six. And you go around to the other side. Because I got the 30 amp connection there. I don't want to bump that since this is mining still.
things plugged in. Recommend some good risers. The ones that are in the description are good risers. Links in the description. Links in the description. Brought to you by Milano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. They did not pay for that spot. <laughs> what did you do? Bring it down another miner? Yeah. Oh, we, we, I was just going to steal this one. Run two of them side by side. You had an extra? Huh? You had an extra? Yeah, I got one for Christmas. Oh, there you go. It's tiny compared to the 40 inch. No. <laughs> <laughs> Feed me cookies. No, you can take that. You did. You Do your counts. Total watts on sixty GPUs. Huh? Total watts on sixty GPUs. Um so each one's it's eighteen hundred times five you did the math on that BTC below 14 BTC is below 14 right now yes awesome bye still holding 700, 719. Yeah, so you're, you're having a, a flip. Or you're not having a flip, but you're having a, a, a good growth on the alts on, on, BC, on BTC right now. Where BTC really outgrew all of them. So if you had money in alts and BTC was flying to 19K, you were losing your butt if you had it by comparison. Star Wars out there. What's this? Um, 
You bring down HDMI with it? Yeah, we're gonna need HDMI with it. We're also gonna need a network. Oh, you got one right here. Pre wire. In my cables. Yeah, old school, new school, doesn't matter. It'll all work. Obviously, we'll re have different power, our network situation here. This is more just getting it tested. Then we're going to have to run the network in and back behind. But I would say, is before you tie all that kind of stuff down, you get everything tested first. Just in case if you need to pull anything, you can. It's a thin ass monitor, man. Alright. Power button on this thing. Back, bottom, back, right. Bottom button's got it. Up there. Anything else? This needs a power. Juice the three you're not plugged in. Okay, and then we need a power. Here it is. A little power switch. Cheap. Oh, these on the Amazon link to the two and two over. In the very first order of business, is we got to do an update to the BIOS. So we got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is right. F1 to go in. I'm going to zoom in on the screen so you guys get to see everything I'm doing here. Let's do this. It's a little uh, filter. This is the stuff you guys are going to care about. They can tell me if they can see that clearly. Hopefully they can. So the very first thing that we're doing is we're hitting F7, which is right down here. F7. We're going to go over. And I'm not going to change any BIOS settings right now. I'm just going over to Tools, and I'm going over to Flash Utility. We're going to go over from Internet. We're going to say Yes. That was going to shut down the machine. It's going to reboot it. And it's going to come right back into the BIOS to get the BIOS. So what this is, is this sets the BIOS into a mode to get updated. So we can go in there and update the latest BIOS on this motherboard. How many 6-pin to 8-pin adapters for it? One. One in this configuration. And we can see the 10 that we have plugged in right now. Because Windows will only allow us to update 10 GPUs at a time for the BIOS. We're going to go back over to Internet. We're going to go DHCP.
There it is. Mining Expert 403 is the BIOS version. We're going to hit OK. It's going to download it. Yes. This takes just a couple minutes, about a minute, to go and update. Hopefully our internet's came looking good. So once this gets updated, then we'll go into and we'll set up the BIOS settings for this. Have the BIOS issues with the B250 been eradicated? Hmm, BIOS issues. So I haven't had any BIOS issues. It just it, we have not tested it with more than 13 GPUs on the regular. We will test it. Probably not tonight, but we will do it with this setup here. This is probably going to be a, a potentially a couple different live streams. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll definitely do uh, several episodes from this build, but. Now we're going to get into the BIOS. It's done updating. We're going to go to F7. We're going to go over to Advanced. Mining mode needs to be enabled, which it is. The slot, the detect slot function, that is what gives you that startup screen on the B250. Miscellaneous configurations, I just make sure all this stuff's disabled, which it is. CPU configuration, that's nothing. You don't do anything there. System agent SA configuration, come down here. I always turn on VTD. You don't really need it. It's just for virtualization. I always have it on. Just it's something I've always turned on, and I just don't want to turn or mine. I don't want to do a mining rig without it on because I've just always had it on. I don't know if it should not have any effect on the mining rig, but I do let virtualization be on. Above 4G decoding, that is a requirement that has to be enabled. Um, nothing under configuration, graphics configuration, D, DMI, OPI configuration. This goes to Gen 1. Go back up. PEG port configuration will stay on Gen 1. That's correct. Nothing in the memory configuration. PCI configuration, you just go in here, PCI configuration, express... Make sure that's Gen 1, which it is. All these others. Onboard configuration, we disable. The onboard uh, HD audio controller, no reason for that. And then we come over here. And if you're going to use simple mining, you need to come over here to CMS compatibility support module. You need to enable that to auto. Or you can have it on to... Uh, you can have it set to enabled, which will turn on the UFI and legacy. Otherwise, it's not going to see your USB drive. So if you run into an issue where you don't understand why it's not picking up your USB, it's because you are not looking for it. Why don't you turn off the audio in the BIOS? I did. You did. It's right here. Onboard HD audio controller is disabled. They probably missed it. I was flying through it. And then after that, I save changes. There's essentially what it picked up was changes. And we hit OK. Now we're going to let Windows boot. And let it pick up this, this setup and configuration. There's the 10. And we're going to let this boot up real quick. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. There we go. And that's Windows. So the first time I rebooted, it was looking for Legacy, and then it went under the UEFI boot. Will those, P, will those P104s work on this board like the P106s? They expand to 19. The which one? The, the P104s will work with the, just like the P106s to get this board to 19. Right? Correct. They should. We haven't tested it though. So those first few reboots that you saw, sometimes if you plug in a new, uh, a new, uh, if you make a duplication of a hard drive, an existing hard drive, sometimes it'll take it a few times before Windows tries to go and make, manage the drive. So now we're up, and now this should take a second for Windows to. Let's look and see if it sees the ten. Now it immediately found the ten. And I want to explain why it did that so fast. So we had already set up this other one here. And then I do, after I had done set up Windows with this and had the other machine with the 13, that took a cool minute. When the first time I loaded this in, it sat there and had to install all the drivers for those and took probably 15 to 20 minutes to get all that set up. It'll sit there and freeze the OS up. It will blink a few times. When you know it is completed is when you can right click on this taskbar and you can go to task manager and it comes right up. There's no delay. When you're clicking the windows button and it doesn't do anything, just let it sit. Let it sit for 20 minutes if you have to and let it finish its install. Again, you're not going to pit that many GPUs in Windows unless you're running at least the version of Windows for the Fall Creator Update, which is version 17.0, You have to have the Fall Creator Update. You will know that you have the Fall Creator Update if you right-click on your Task Manager and you go to Performance. One of the quickest indicators is, is you see these little icons that are different colors here and if you scroll down and you see GPUs in this list you have the fall creator update congratulations you know where it, you have it right there that's how you can tell really easily is that you actually see performance of GPUs including video, video encoding video decoding 3d all those properties of a GPU that's how you know after you have that then you can plug in more than eight GPUs and if you're going to do a lot of mining builds, this is like the one thing that you're going to have to, if you're going to do Windows and you're going to do updates and stuff, you want to do it to one rig first. Get everything set up on it, get everything right on it, and then you duplicate the drive after that. Because then what you just saw was proof that if you do that, you can plug a fresh install. You guys that were on with this with me right now, was cradle to grave to build this, and I booted up Windows right away. And it was already set up with all the GPUs. If you're working on a large farm build like this, you want to do your copies post your first rig. It will save you an amazing amount of time. This is like the, the $10,000 freebie that I just gave whoever from a time cost schedule performance side. Is doing it that way will save you an amazing amount of time. Uh, they ask how you do your pre-built Windows drives. I take a fresh copy of media creation tool I go out to win Microsoft Windows you Google media creation tool you download you let it build you a fresh USB you do that on the regular you do that on the regular because if you let the media creation tool recreate that USB it's gonna put the latest Windows updates already on there so like right now if you go and do the Windows creation tool update that will create that USB bootable for you it will put the fall creator update on there so then you save all that time for updating then you build a fresh copy on whatever build setup you are. We did that for this build last night. As we set up there with the B250 and these GPUs and got everything set up on one build. And then after that one was completely done with all the drivers and everything working, I took a, a f image of that hard drive post that activity. Which with new GPUs, as long as they're in the same brand combo, they will come right up and Windows works perfectly fine with everything already installed and ready to go.
And if I took this drive and duplicated it and went to the whole other new, new B250 board with these GPUs, everything would just come right up just like this. 95% of the time, I'm going to tell you that there has been occasions sometimes where I've had it to where it goes and installs all the cards again. And that is usually predicated on a different memory type or some kind of controller structure difference in the card. You can have versions like, uh, and I had this specifically with the Gigabyte Aorus cards, where the Gigabyte Aorus cards has a revision one and a revision two. If you have revision, if you have any kind of mixed cards like that, you will get it to where it'll sit there and rejog the drivers again. So that's all just giving you guys some drop knowledge there. Okay, so the next step, the very first next step that you do after this is you want to find out if all of the GPUs have the same memory type. A quick way to do that is to GPU Z and just look up real quick each of the memory types. So this is gonna come up right here. And we're just gonna validate that these are all LP to memory. Because if they are, then we're gonna go ahead and push the BIOS that we have for this card onto all of these. We're gonna do it to the first 10 here and then we'll shut it down and then I'm going to unplug three of them. Or actually, I'm going to plug all the ten cards. And I'm just going to plug back in the three that we didn't plug in. Get those ones updated. And then we're, we'll plug everything in at one time. And then it'll go through and actually have to set all the... It'll go... It, once I plug all 13 in, it's going to go through and it's going to have to set them up. It'll take like four minutes. Now, this part takes a second because it has to do a little port scan of all the GPU port IDs. And it takes a cool second here while it goes and does that. So it will pop up here in a second. We haven't missed any other super sheds in a while, haven't we? We haven't answered in a lot of questions. Huh? We haven't answered a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. Thought about trying bit mains so far. Mm -hmm. Trigger word. What did you say? Bit mains what? So fun. Never heard of it. Me neither. I don't follow anything really with bit main. Because you get a trigger. Oh, I don't. I don't have any direct problem with bit main. I just they're they're doing their thing and. I have my uh, my own opinions on A6 and that entire space, but it's uh, I think the I think the community gets the scraps. Bottom line. Why that's trying to figure its life out. I'm going to right click on it. There it goes. <laughs> Maybe your wife just told you to put the cookies down. Uh, what? <laughs> put the cookies down? This is BBT. Put down the cookies. <laughs> put down the cookies. Um, Nice Trade says, hey BBT, have a great year, bud. There you go. You too. Hopefully it's good and uh, prosperous Probably. for everybody. So we're just going to go through this list here real quick. And make sure that this memory type is all says Alpita. I turned my heat off so that they wouldn't complain about the heater and home. Um, very cold. Is it cold upstairs? 
Daddy, I think I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> How cold is it up there? Oh, 65. Oh, you can turn it back on. It's all good. They can deal with it. This thing isn't putting out enough heat yet. Will be soon. 26 GPUs will get some heat going in a house. So far, we're all Alpita. Awesome on Hashgraph. I don't even know what that is. You know what Hashgraph is? I've read a little bit into it. There's people that talk about it. It's like the next post. It's just another feature set. It's the same thing that we used to get questions back in the day on when script was out and they were like, anybody ever check into DAG? DAG or Hashimo? Almost done. You have to check and make sure, guys, what what uh, memory types you have. Now, a cool thing is there are some some OSs that do give you all your memory types right out of the gate when you first boot up. But Windows isn't one of them. Okay, all of them are Elpida. That's good to know. So now we go and do right click on Windows. Uh, button and then are the start button and then you go to Windows PowerShell admin. So yes, let me make sure they can see this if the camera's tilted just right. We're gonna zoom in and just in that spot. Camera's going crazy. can see that nice and tight nice and tight all right let's bring this up just a hair all right so essentially we need to get to setting we'll do 150 percent how about that like a boss let me zoom out because it's probably way oversized now nope that looks pretty good Algorithm technology. I just haven't really researched to be honest with you that much. So now, he have four hard, hard drives. Mod. Hmm? I have four hard drives. I need to search for old wallets. Yeah, join the club. All right. So we're going into the ATI WinFlash folder. You can do a period backslash ATI flash space minus I, which will go out and we'll just verify that PowerShell sees all of the cards. Command right there. Let's zoom out some. You guys can go full screen if you need to. We see all the cards. When you do this ATI flash space minus I, it shows you all the cards. These are all the cards. Mm -hmm. They all pass the test. There's nine of them. Adapter zero through nine. So now we are going to go up the arrow because we have done this a few times. And the command, you use period backslash ATI flash. There's a space minus P a space, 
the GPU ID, that is the adapter ID, then the space, and then if you, you give it the ROM name, which if you're in the folder, if you copy the ROM into the folder that the ATI flash is in, if you were to get rid of this, it would be a period, you just do a period backslash, you start to type the name of it, so this was Sapphire, if you hit, that's, a, that's enough to just hit tab, and it will fill it in the rest for you. Just like, uh, just like any shell in Linux. And then that's pulling this BIOS up here that we already have. This is the BBT version that is the timings only for this LP to RX 570. We're doing adapter zero first. We hit enter. And now it is going to flash that card. There's the old, there's the new, there's what it's doing. When that's done, we're going to hit the up arrow. We're going to do this 10 times. You can automate this. You can use a PA and then the device ID type, and it will go through all of them at the same time. I mean, it goes one after another, but honestly, it's not much faster than me just going an up arrow, back, one, enter, I'm doing the same thing all the way through nine. This is how you flash nine GPU or 10 GPUs in Windows very quickly. Again, we created this BIOS with using the timings only. We are using the 1500 timings copied down to the 2000. And on the second set of timings, we used a custom one. Because the first, uh, if you copied the second set of the Series 2 timings, they, it would just the BIOS was unstable. So we had to have a, sep a second set of timings that were custom for the second set. So now we're just gonna go through this real quick and then all of these cards will be flashed. We will shut it down. We will do it for the last three, same kind of setup. And then all 13 of these cards are flashed and updated and go from a stock of about 22 mega hash to close to 30. Doing number three. We use PowerShell because it's a hell of a lot faster. And when you're dealing with 12 GPUs, the ATI Wind Flash utility only does shows you the first three cards. What is that? You know, so many little computer nerd things that not everybody knows. And another dude says, I see him more than I do my mom. <laughs> We're on five of ten. So you should have your custom BIOS to say BBT BIOS. BBT BIOS. Oh, I got BBT only. T only. Got ROM. We'll upload this BIOS after this too, guys. We'll make it available. I'll put an update to the episode database for this live stream, and we'll have that BIOS included. This is BBT still rocking it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not there. She's like, normally she sits there and she'll just. Be where you're at and just fall asleep in the chair. It's awesome. And then I'm like, hey, is there any questions? And she's out. She's just passed out. Not me. I'm not an old lady. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I... Yeah, was, uh, Let's see if I can trigger her. Triggered. <laughs> <laughs> see if I trigger her and shit. Seven. And don't worry, guys, I'm going to get into the bat file right after this. I'll show you the settings we are pushing to these cards in the command line, including the voltage changes. That way you guys can see what we're doing with that also. And then you'll see the output of this, these cards after it. Well, 
We're almost done with this. Again, we're going to shut this down. We're going to put the three back. We're going to put the other three cards in. We're going to boot it up, do the same thing as this real quick. We need all 13 cards with the same BIOS on it. Updated. Nine. Okay, so there we started with GPU ID zero. Nine is the tenth. So if we would have had 11 cards in here, Windows would have seen it. But when I would have done the ATI forward slash or the dash I, it would have only seen 10 cards. That's why we're only doing 10 cards. Okay, we're done. Exit. And we are going to give this a shutdown. We'll wait for the machine to shut all the way off, and then I'm pulling all the risers, and then pulling in the three that we have. Kind of float these down, make sure they're not touching anything. And then plug these three because we did not do these three over. Bro coin. Sometimes I'm watching a new project. Bro coin. Bro coin. I'm in. You hungry? I'm good. Got you, bro. Got you, bro. All right. So it's, we're gonna boot up these three. We're gonna finish the BIOS on these three, and then we will. And there it is. It's gonna boot up with these three. Make sure it sees them. Device manager. There it goes. There's the three, the three new ones. You gotta give it a second. It's still booting. You know it's still booting because I'm trying to click in the search tab here and it's still working. Yeah. We're gonna get we had a launch GPU Z. We have to check the BIOS on all or we have to check the the types on all of these and GPU Z. You will make a fatal mistake on your GPU if you do not validate that you have the same memory types. The so first one is Alpita, second one's Alpita. Everything's Alpita. And I'm on 13 RX 480 8 gig nitros on 3 850T2s. Can you run what? PowerShell. 13 4 RX 488 gig nitros. Um. 3850T2s. Yes. You should be able to.
the 480s with the power save BIOS actually uses less power than the 580s. The 580s actually have a little more power management on them, including an extra VRM on most of them, which actually they use a little more power than the 480s. So, I don't, I don't remember if they make 850 T2s. I know that they make 1,000 T, or 1,200 T2s. But the P2s are what we're using. Hard mod, VTI, Win flash. This card mod folder is a folder we created. So if you're ever trying to figure that out, that's what that is. It, what you need to care about is the ATI Win Flash, because if you download ATI Win Flash, that's the folder you're gonna have. And then I always do the period backslash. ATI Flash, don't be confused with Win Flash. Win Flash is the Windows, the actual UI version. The ATI Flash is the actual com uh, command line version. And then minus I, you always rerun this to just to make sure that it sees all of the cards. I don't want to try to push commands to a card that, that the command line is not seeing. Now that I've verified I see the cards. I'm going to hit the up arrow several times until I get to this. Keep hitting the up arrow. I'm going to start with GPU zero, and I'm then I'm going to hit enter. Now we're going to flash these three cards and shut it right back down. That one's done. Back up. Lots of up arrow action here to one and then enter. This is the other advantage also if you're duplicating the drive to an existing board because you can uh, use the up arrow because you've already done the command at least once. You ship to Montreal for t-shirts? Yes. Yes. We ship everywhere. I've shipped... I've shipped to uh, pretty much everywhere besides uh, an axis of evil. Huh. <laughs> no, no soup for you, North Korea. Don't hack me, bro. I don't have this all the way down. It's probably sitting there waiting for me. I'm going to scroll this down. Oh. It was ready for me. I was just... And number two. Wouldn't it be easier to use ATI Flash software as opposed to this method? ATI what? ATI Flash software. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and if he's talking about the Windows version, the GUI version, it only does the first three GPUs. And no, because I guarantee you, PowerShell is going to be a lot faster than somebody doing using Windows. You could click it through all that stuff. Because I'm just hitting an up arrow and enter, essentially. Shut down. I mean, you tell me, anybody that's used the Windows version, have you ever flashed 13 GPUs that fast? My guess is your answer is no. I'm just plugging all the risers in. So you're going to be looking at a blank screen for a second. I'll answer questions while you're waiting. Or maybe BBT Brett can start singing elevator music. 
getting texts from your wife about the loud chip noises. The loud what? The loud chip noises. Chip noises? Yeah. Oh, she hears the crunch, crunch, crunch? Uh-huh. Yeah, well. Did somebody else do a, a freaking three-hour live stream? It was like a Jerry Lewis marathon. <laughs> Jerry Lewis marathon. <laughs> so I... I mean, real question, is is this actually helping anybody out there that's thinking about doing this? True story. Question, yes or no? How many people we got in there? 240 people must agree. I mean, that's a real question. Is this really actually helping people? You got a black screen, bro. She's saying zoom out. This is BBT's. She's over here directing? She's directing this thing from uh, from remote. How do I zoom out? Which one zooms out? Um, hold on. Is it the top one? It's the little dial that's... On the top? Yeah, all the way back. And it goes... Right here? Yeah, and then like, go right or left of it. Yeah. Upgrade. Now they see me on my knees. <laughs> PG. PG. Keep it PG, bro. A lot of people are saying yes to that question. Okay, good. Well, if it, if it is helping, we do value the likes. So if you have not hit the like button, do us a flavor and hit the like button. There's 240 people in here. We should have at least 240 likes. Part of the time that takes when you're doing this, putting all your risers back in there, is I like having them very symmetrical to where the cards are at and to where they line up. So I want all the ones on this side, on this side of the board, and all the ones over here. So it's just making sure everything's weaved back in. Like, see, I don't like this because the mouse is behind this. Alright, everything's nice and clean. Let's do one last check everything in. Now this board actually lets you see and if you got one you got a cable a little too close to the thing you're gonna get a grind sound. Huh? Didn't help. <laughs> now we can deal with that right now. Trying to make sure that this thing ain't catching anything. Okay. What is this hitting? Oh, I see. It's not actually the CPU. I'm actually moving all the cables away from the CPU, and it was the uh, the whole time it was the on the actual GPU. Why? You got a lot of likes, I guess, and two dislikes. I said, one of those dislikes is Mrs. Bean Tea because she's jelly. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to zoom back in on the screen because you guys don't care about me. You got an error on that 16x PCI slot. Oh, did I? Wasn't paying attention.
I'm gonna leave that one unplugged. It wasn't actually plugged in. It was just floating above it. When I went to lift up the cable to see which one was causing the uh, the sound, I'm gonna shut this back down. I uh, pulled the because it, it looked like the cable was going and hitting the CPU, <laughs> yeah. but it was actually going up and hitting the the uh, GPU fan. So. Now it's down. You should be able to see the startup screen. But we do like that diog screen. <laughs> Someone said, is this the Amazon home setup service? I said, it's the BBT setup service. And there we go, we got everything green. 13 GPUs. Mrs. BBT is telling the channel that she likes having the bed to herself. What? Behave. Is she on a laptop? I guess so. She on her phone? No, that would be clutch. <laughs> now it does take a second to get into Windows with 13 GPUs. Let's go in here and look at the device manager. And there you go. You can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Still up? Yep. We Roxy parties. Hmm. Um. Oh, we got a super chat. Super chat, huh? You ready? Yep. We need super chat music. We do. I need. I. I need so much work on that. Well, somebody rolls a crit in D and D. We. Somebody rolls a crit in D and D. Ghetto crit. <laughs> when something like that. Yeah. It's some kind of sound effect. Yeah. Uh, Joe Perry, blockchain driver or adrenaline driver, and are there any quirks to either of those with the Win Ten creators update? Update. Thanks. Been wondering. We use the latest driver available by AMD, uh, whatever's available at the current time, and we make sure that it's in compute mode. So you have to make sure that when you right click here and you go into AMD settings, that it is running in compute mode. Now, since we're not going to be using, our, our goal with this mining farm is not to be using Windows. We're using Windows because we're getting the drivers set up and we're making sure the, card, the cards are dialed in and that they function overnight running Windows because if I need to change the BIOS, I can and it's not a pain in the butt. Like I'm gonna use these drives to go in there and rechange the drive, the, the BIOSes. But if it's stable for a few days in Windows, then we're gonna be using Linux and that way it's just easier to manage a farm size. Uh, Windows with updates and everything else, we're not gonna be using Windows, so. Joe thinks he gets power spikes with the blockchain drivers. Uh, we do not use the blockchain drivers, it's super unstable. 
That's why I like using the, the compute mode version of the AMD Radeon right here. So if you go into global settings and then each of these things, you can come down here and choose these to compute. You hit these to compute, you hit yes, and then eventually it'll restart. It's not doing an update. 99% CPU. Yes. Compute, yes. So normally this is supposed to restart. These are actually not... It looks like it's holding those settings, but it's not right now. This thing needs a reboot after this, but you would go in here and hit this, this compute. You hit yes. This normally closes. If this stays open like this, it didn't take the setting. You can close this. So for the purposes tonight, we're not going to get into doing it. So what I would do with this right now is I would pull this off. Or, you know, I'd, I'd reinstall this driver because this is not... This is like on that one it's holding, but on these I'm going to have to go back through and uh, not restart, or not install the driver, but restart the computer and make sure that the compute holds. You go through on the latest drivers and you go and do that. And see, it's, it's not even trying to, it's not closing right now because it was trying to close. Eventually it will close, it needs to catch up. But while we're waiting for that to close, here's what we were looking at settings wise for the, before we shut this down tonight. As I'm looking under Ubik, under our, our PC here, this is what we're running right now as a test. And under here, it is stable with these settings. Or at least the other one is stable with the settings. We're running VDDC at 990, MVDDC at 990, clock at 1150, and M clock at 2060. With those settings, we can get this ATI driver to bug off. We can just launch this. We go into 33. Let's check and see what we get out of this with 13 GPU or 13 cards running those settings. Again, you guys saw me build this cradle to grave. Sees the 13 GPUs. First time, it's going to take it a second. Or it's going to hang because this driver thing back here is still setting up. It hasn't released it. Good chance that it needs a reboot. So I end task on that. Let's see if that releases it over to here. Now that it's not waiting. What ups do you suggest for a 13 GPU system? The who? GPS. Oh. Well, I mean, so the trip lights are, are fused. Um, usually you don't run battery power with, with a, such a heavy setup like this. You're going to have to go to a server class battery backup. Surely because you're going to be using what a server would be using. I would look at a server class UPS if you're <laughs> wanting to actually run a UPS with your setup. So that... I just restarted the miner. As you could tell, the ATI driver, when it was trying to commit the changes, 
was actually holding up the miner from running. So after restarting and trying, right now we're getting 25 a pop. I need to reboot this. And then we'll probably see it, it increase up from there. Close this out. This needs a reboot. Make sure, save. Oh, did this have the no fee? No, look here. Nope, that's good. We're going to give it a reboot real quick. We should see about 30 on this. And then we can start to wrap this up for this build tonight. <coughs> Obviously, once we get the other the other three running and we have the whole farm up, we'll be doing a deeper dive on that. I'm showing you guys it. and then we also have to do some configuration to get a lot of the different currencies working on this farm there is time to do that too that we have to spend but if you're trying to wonder what the time commitment on something like this is you're looking at a farm this size it's about a about a full week worth of effort from uh, a, at least an experienced person putting together these just from just the configuration management side of it you can burn really quickly eight hours just through the trial and error periods of finding the right settings for everything that's stable but once that's done and you can get it like clockwork it's that time well spent but you're looking at about a 40 hour or event of a really decently experienced person And I know from just talking and helping other people that have built farms or tried to build farms, they've spent a lot longer time trying to get their stuff going. So it is it is an event and you have to be ready for it. It's kind of like taking on a house project, like redoing your basement or something or redoing your a room in your house. I mean, you kind of tear up the base floor and then you realize, oh crap, this is going to be a, an event. That's the way these things can turn into. Okay, that's all set. Let's see. Any more questions before we wrap this up? What's your email? People want to bitsbe tripping at gmail.com. I think we just blew the driver. Let's do this. May have one card that's not liking these voltage settings. We'll come back to that. We'll take this down to 2,000. About 20,000, that would be interesting. See if the driver's fully blown. Not launching that, I would say yes. We have one more reboot with some different settings, and then we'll wrap this up. I just want to make sure it starts mining with a decent, uh, close to 30 mega hash on across all 13 cards. It's seeing all 13 cards fine. <laughs> There's a high interest level so kind of shift to reading.
barbecue baked glaze. 65% less fat, boys and girls. <laughs> There's a lot of brands in this episode that are not, yeah. not being sponsored. They are not being sponsored, so... Big Lay's. What kind of energy drink do you drink? It's another unsponsored shout out somebody asked for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another, uh... Right now we're drinking uh, Coke Zero. <laughs> Not sponsored spot. Oh, the endorsements are going to roll in after tonight. Yep. Did you bake them with a miner? The bake blades, that is. <laughs> you, <laughs> you could actually probably bake some stuff with the miners. That one actually has heated up down here. We're in a little <laughs> less aggressive settings. <laughs> Mrs. BBT said you should, you should put a link to the chips below. <laughs> <laughs> put a link to the chips below? Yeah, there you go. B250 will work with NVIDIA cards on Windows for 13 cards, right? Yes. The B250 does work with Windows for 13 cards. Well, this is fine in all of them. It is not liking those settings I have on it, though. It's probably one or two that are probably really the problem. 1950. 1950 is the standard speed that you would put on these because these start at 1750 and performance. I'm going to try one more time. Cody gets some of his things. He's been trying to decide what direction to head with his 14480 nitros. And so this video couldn't come at a better time. Nice. All the problems are solved. Good time. Glad we could help. Smash that like button. Share to a friend. You can always check out our website at bitsbetrippin.com. Now, see, I would go through an iterative test like this. I'm giving you guys kind of an insight of what I'm doing, of the different changes in some settings. We'd get into a little more forensics with trying to narrow down which cards are giving me the problem. I'll use process of elimination on something like this. If I still can't get it to fire and be confident on it, I will have the cards that are on the board right now and I will try to get, you know, seven, six of them working and I'll add one at a time. It is a very iterative thing. It takes several hours, but you will find that you're a problem child through that process and then probably have to use a little less aggressive settings on the BIOS. You're not dual mining right now, right? I am not dual mining right now. We will be dual mining though with these. It's really dialing in the settings first and then making sure we're good to go on single mining. Then we'll scale it up to dual mining and make sure they're stable. We were doing mining with this one earlier before the live stream though. Yeah.
just making sure that it was stable, which it is. Right now, I'm just trying to get it to launch. I got an email on a 40 mega hash BIOS on a GTX 1060. Is that a scan? Yes. All the BIOSes that you're seeing that supposedly give you 40 or 50 or 60 mega hash on it, it's all fake. It's a false front line that is tricking Claymore Miner and giving you false settings. You will find out over a period of time that you're not actually going to the pool with that level of hash rate. It's all a scam. Well, I think part of it's because I had extra spaces in this. Copy. I'm going to go back to that because I think it's actually stable. I think this thing's doing an update. Sure, acting like it. I'm actually using my older miner. I, I haven't downloaded uh, 5.7 on this. See, this should be coming up right away. Making me feel... Let's do... Tripping.com Multiminer 5.7 Here, fix it to our GitHub. I need to merge in some changes here at some point, but I can go here, download. Just downloading the new, this is the 5.7 multi miner. Master. Now that's going. Let's snaggle this setting out of it. Copy. Acting like a spindle. It's definitely doing a Windows update. All these little peaks and valleys. It's trying to do multiple things right now. Edit. Go down to Ubik. Paste, save, five, seven came right up, three, and we'll see if it blows the driver or not. There 
it goes. So I think it was just the version I had on there. Maybe uh, maybe it got corrupted. And there they're running. Still only getting 25s, but again, we're not running the compute driver right now. We're not. We need to switch these over to compute mode. But this is 30 mega hash, just like this other one. They just have to go through the driver and add in compute. So 25.7 if you're not running compute mode. If you are running compute mode, you're at 30 mega hash. And I think I have one that was in compute mode, I thought. Let's see it there. But that's what it is. And we crashed, which is fine. That's got the same thread stuck driver. This one had, I need to do the no fee on there. And I think we'll be good. But I think we're going to wrap this one up, guys. I got some more testing, obviously, to do with it. But we need to get our compute mode driver on there. We need to get it updated. And then we're going to go back through this with simple mining. Once these are all tucked in and we get all the rest of them going. So... If any last questions, we're going to get the rest of these built over the next few days, and then we'll have another live stream with everything running and simple mining, and we'll go through on how we kind of manage that, that part of it. So part of the fun with uh, sometimes right out of the box, you will have some issues like that where you have to get through, but the big part is getting it built. And then you can work through the software issues. Not that big of a deal. Any questions before we wrap it up? No, we're good. We'll be into it like a hundred and. You said two forty all the time. I'm like a boss. Cool. Anybody does us a huge favor and does some timestamps on this, be sure to include your ETC address, and we always take care of you guys on that. So. Somebody wants to do us a flavor and put some timestamps on this video once it gets posted. And we'll shoot you some love through some ETC. Well, we did the last the last guy um, last week. So let this reboot and we got some some configuring to do. We can wrap this one up. Peace.